Let's quickly check these out and see if they look good, if we agree with them and where they come from. Okay. So you need to use a variety of techniques to get all of these different pronumerals. And that's part of what I just wanted to see if you were able to manage at the moment. You guys know when you often get an exercise in a book, the exercise tells you what skill you need to use every single time. It's like, this whole exercise is about Pythagoras. So you kind of get in sort of Pythagoras mode and you know every single question is going to be related to that idea, right? But in sort of more real life situations, you get problems and you don't know what knowledge is required or what skill. That's part of the skill, working out what's required. So when you have a look at these, you need to sift through all the tools in your toolbox and work out which one you need. Start with number one. What do you use to work out H? This one is Pythagoras. That's why I use that as my first example. 5 squared plus 12 squared does equal 13 squared because it's a right angle triangle. So you've got a length there. Fantastic. Now, you don't actually need that length to find out theta. You could have found, sorry, I rubbed that out. You could have found theta first. How would you have done it? If you didn't know what H was, how would you do it? Yeah, was it? Okay, so you would write your line before this. And by the way, um, I've mentioned to people up on the board, I didn't require you to put down working because I didn't give you heaps of space. But you in your book or in an exam, you absolutely have to have working because I need to know where this angle came from. Uh, and also for your own sake, if this is right or wrong, how do you really know? Um, it's kind of like a black box at the moment. Where did this number appear from? Like what, what's the reason for it? You have no idea. So the line before this would be, as uh, Wise I mentioned, would be to do with tan. Why tan? Because if this is your position and you look at these two sides, one's opposite and the other is adjacent, and that's, that's tan. So this would be the line preceding your answer. If you don't have that line in your working, can you please put it down? It's not enough to think that. Use your calculator and then write down an answer. Okay, you've got to show the working. Is 22 degrees 37 minutes okay? Do you agree with that? Yep, great. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Uh, now alpha, alpha doesn't require any trigonometry in this triangle. What could you use? What knowledge can you use? I think I heard it. Yeah, the angle sum of a triangle, right? Because you've got these two angles and that gives you the third one. Um, another way of thinking about it is that in a right angle triangle, these two here, they have to be, what's their relationship again? Starts with a C? They're complementary. Very good. They add up to 90, not supplementary. That adds up to 180. So that gives you 43 degrees. Here is Danielle's answer, 9.33. How would you get that number? What's, again, what's the preceding line? <coughs> Or what's a preceding line? You can have lots of different ones. 10, 47 degrees, 10 over H. 10 of 47 degrees. So again, we've chosen opposite and adjacent because that's the sides that you're nearby. And it's important that you get this order correct, right? If you wrote A over 10, adjacent over opposite, you'll get a completely different value for A. Okay. Now, just before we leave off this question and do the last one, um, I've emphasized all the way through this year that every time you get an answer, you have to do what's called a sense check, right? Everywhere you possibly can. You can't always, but lots of the time you can. Does this answer make sense given the context? Okay. Now, it's 9.33. That's pretty, pretty close to 10. Would you agree? Does it make sense that these lengths would be pretty close to each other? Or do you expect one to be much longer than the other? Let me ask this question another way, right? If you guys agree that we should expect this number to be close to this number, my next question is why? Why would you expect them to be like in the same ballpark? Yeah, Daniel? Yeah, fantastic. This told us that it's 43 and 47. Those are very close to being an isosceles triangle. Do you agree? And so therefore, you're going to have something close in terms of the lengths to an isosceles triangle. There's one other piece of information. Suppose I was punching my buttons on my calculator and I got, say, 10.33, okay? Now that passes the first sense check because it's close. It's in the same vicinity. But there's something else that can tell you this can't possibly be the answer, even though it's in the right ballpark. Can someone tell me, without any calculation of any kind, why 10.33 can't make sense? Any suggestions? 
Jake, if you're, your arm is like half up, do you want to venture something? Yeah, okay, just give that muscle a yeah, okay. Uh, Aaron, what do you think? Ten is forty-seven. Then for forty-three, can't be more than ten. Aha. Uh -huh. So, let me let me try and restate what Aaron said because he's got the kernel of it, but some of the bits are a bit confusing in there. Um, in a triangle, right? This is the whole idea of trigonometry. In a triangle, the angles and the sides are related; they're connected together. Okay. When you have an angle and a side that's opposite it, they're related in this very closely connected way. If you have a big angle, right, I've done this with you before, just take your two hands and imagine they're the sides of a triangle, right? Now, if you put them close together like this, okay, you've got a small angle between your hands. Do you agree? You got the small angle there? Yeah. Now have a look at the side that will be opposite that. Imagine your two fingers, your index fingers joining a side. It's a small side, right? Small angle, small side. Now as you widen that angle, well, have a look at the side that you're creating, the side between your two fingers. A wider angle means a wider, a longer side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now when you come back to this diagram, see how this guy's 47. So the side that's, this angle is bigger than this angle. So the side that's opposite has to be bigger than this side. 10.33, question mark. You're putting a bigger side opposite a smaller angle. That doesn't make sense. It's contradictory. Okay. So that's another kind of sense check you can use. And it will come in handy in about three lessons time. So remember. Last one. Uh, x equals 28. What's the line before that? What's the line before x equals 28? We're going to use a ratio. I think I heard it. We're going to use cosine. Okay. Cos of x is going to be equal to? Adjacent on hypotenuse. Okay. Now once you do that, once you get x, you don't need to use trigonometry to find y or the other way around, right? What's the relationship between these two angles? Same one before, they're complementary. So you can get the, the next one without any calculator work at all.